Joining us this morning is 1992 Super Bowl Most Valuable Player, Mark Rippon. Mark, how's it going? I heard you're playing some golf in Texas these days. Bobby, I've, I'm not a big wind player. Texas has some wind. Uh, there's not a lot of a lot of land here that'll keep that uh, breeze coming through here. It blew about 20, 25 mile an hour yesterday, and I was uh, good enough to get uh, sneak a 76 out there and put me in the top five or six in our celeb group uh, to rub shoulders with these guys, do it in an environment like this, uh, raise some money for the Momentous Institute here in, in Dallas, Texas, and the first tee of Dallas and Fort Worth. And uh, it's awesome. And this, co this country club, Las Colinas Country Club, can come up and bite you. Great golf course, a lot of great people here in Dallas. Uh, I wouldn't say this is friendly territories uh, for me, you know, being playing the Cowboys, but it, uh, it's been a fun few days already. So You've always been one of the best entertainers slash athletes that plays the game of golf. I mean, you end up winning in Lake Tahoe a couple of times. How would you rate your game these days? Uh, well, I have to walk, and I'm, I'm about two months away from getting my knee replaced. So uh, it's, it's, it's a struggle to get around the golf course, but I still really am just uh, infatuated by the game. You know, I think through COVID, one of the things I think that's kept people sanity was golf and, and being able to be outdoors, you know, and try to do some things that we enjoy doing. So golf's one of the things that I've has been great for me. Not only is it open doors for raise money for charitable or my charitable organizations that I started and, and many of the other charitable organizations, the PGA Tour, LPGA, and the Champions Tour do a wonderful job raising a lot of money. So golf has been that industry for that. And, and I think through COVID, I think it's just kind of had a resurgence. So uh, I love the game. Uh, I'm not as, uh, what, I ain't as good as I, what's the old Toby Key song? I ain't as good as I once was Bobby and Chris, but uh, I'm as good as I ever was. So uh, if I can get it together and, and play well the next two days today and, uh, and then tomorrow on Sunday against, uh, you know, uh, this, this cast of celebrities, uh, you know, I'll be up there in the top, hopefully, hopefully 10 and, and there's some good players, you know, John Spoltz, a great player, Mark Mulder and Marty Fisher, great players. And so it's uh, a, a good cast of celebrities along with, you know, Larry, the cable, I was just talking to Larry coming off the golf course. He was super jacked. He shot a 42 and he got 19 points. And, and uh, you know, so for him, that's, that's great. And this is not an easy course. So I was, I was happy. I'm going to be playing in Larry's charitable, charitable event in Lincoln, Nebraska, the first of June. So it was good to see him and, and all the, all the players, you know, and, 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 more importantly, I, these things are only as good as the volunteers and the, the people that have come out here to watch us play golf and let us go behind the ropes and live a dream, you know, of, of, of being competitive again in something different in the sport we, or entertainment world that we played in. It's so, so cool. And you've been open, Mark, about dealing with mental illness over the years, depression, and golf has actually been therapy for you playing, you know, roughly usually four to five times a week. Absolutely. You know, and I, I even I talk across the, the globe to some of my peers, you know, Lawrence Taylor, one of the things that saved his life, you know, was golf. And and uh, I, I just think it just gives you an opportunity to, to get away from the rigors of life and be with a, a group of people that you want to be with anyway. And you want to set some some guidelines and, and, and work on some of the things that, uh, you, know, in, in, you know, not only in your golf game, but in your own personal life. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate that, uh, Bobby, to, that it is. It's that. And, and then other um, modalities that uh, we all use to try to make sure that uh, our lives going on and I'm in my golden years now they say I guess you know and be 60 this coming uh, October and amazing how fast that went you know and and our commanders still haven't got to the Super Bowl since the last time uh, we were there so hopefully we can uh, get that thing turned around not a big fan of the name but you know what it is what it is I guess well, we know how difficult it is to get to a Super Bowl here in New York. The Giants and Jets haven't uh, done much lately either, Mark. Well, I, yeah, I understand that. I'm, you know, big Giants fan, big Jets fan. I've, you know, I mean, I've over the years, I'm going to see uh, one of the great Jets all time, Joe Namath in the Alabama. My daughter went to school at Alabama. I'm leaving here, uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, Sunday night and flying into Tuscaloosa to play in their athletic department uh, golf tournament. I'll get to see Coach Saban and, and uh, Joe, Joe, Joe Willie. And uh, of course, you know, that was the last time they had any glory when it came to Super Bowls too. So, you know, Mark, since we have you here as well, I, I thought it was interesting to kind of stay on that topic because as a, a local sports caster, we deal with so many of the topics in the communities that, that are kind of, you know, issues for the people here in the Bronx and, and here in New York. And I think depression has been something that has basically risen during uh, this time during COVID and the pandemic, because, 
anxiety and, and the challenges of really working from home and, and dealing with all of these uh, changes. I, I was just curious if you could speak a little bit more about uh, how that how that has affected you. And I know that at one point you even tried to commit suicide. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, suicide ideology is uh, it runs rampant in our in our uh, our military and our military is, uh, you know, the guys that Chad Pfeiffer and Andrew Batchelder are playing in this golf tournament are, are my heroes. You know, I mean, we got to do what we do in this world because of our servicemen and women. And uh, to know that 23 of them take their lives every day is it, it's, it's hard to fathom. And uh, to know that I was in, in, in a bad place and and uh, and then thought of that, you know, I mean, the one wonderful thing about life and the modalities and things that you have now is I have grandkids, you know, and I have uh, they kind of, you know, bring things into perspective, you know, and, and it doesn't mean that you're, any, you're ever in the clear. You got to be able to, uh, utilize that some of the other modalities I, I've, I've done, uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation, which is TMS treatment. Uh, our military use it. Most our VA hospitals, um, hyperbaric oxygen therapy chambers are another one, another one that's, uh, uh, you know, you, you use to try to, you know, get yourself balanced. And, and the one thing that happens, you know, especially in a pandemic, is uh, the mental health, you know, I and mean, our mental health and, and depression is, has been, uh, it's going to be out the roof. I mean, we're not, we're not through it yet. And it's just going to be uh, uh, insurmountable in the years ahead. And I think if we can get on top of it, and, and we also understand that it takes money. And the first thing that ha usually happens is that we cut mental health costs and mental health providers. And, and we need our, our, our mental health providers there for our uh, fellow man and woman. Uh, to make sure that we get through this the pandemic and and help each and every one of uh, the people that need help and and the other thing is too is that that there is help out there um, coming coming out and and being vocal and and, and uh, you know sharing my story uh, it has helped others and if it just helps one person I feel and, and truly believe uh, Bobby that that's that's what we can do and that's what I want to do and that's um, you know, I've had too many people in my life that was close to me and one being my, my young cousin who played for the uh, Vancouver Canucks and the Winnipeg Jets, rip, rip and take his life, and along with uh, Wade Belak and, and uh, uh, you know, and, and Aaron Bugard, you know, and in the NHL and, and all across the globe. You know, I mean, we have, uh, we have people that need, need our help. So uh, I, I, I just uh, I think it is a time that I, I appreciate you bringing it up and that we can help those that uh, really do need the help. Thank you. I appreciate you speaking about it, Mark. And I, I mean, I know everybody. Of course, even myself remembers you for the Super Bowls and all the great games, but uh, you've had definitely your fair share of highs and lows. And I, I can't even imagine what it must have been like for you to have to deal with uh, burying your three year old son after losing him to a brain cancer. And also at that time, your wife uh, dealing with cancer as well. Is that some of the, the things that happened at that time that may have contributed to, to the depression and things that were going on? That, that you know, once they turn the lights off too, once your, your, your days are numbered and and, you know, people aren't patting you on the back. It's, uh, you know, it's not like a pity party or anything, but, um, you know, you, you, you don't know what to do with your life. You know, there's no book there that says, well, here's what you got to do. I mean, you, you definitely want to uh, get yourself involved around some business people that have some common sense and that'll help you. But uh, other than that, it's, it's like, all right, it's over with. You know, people are all excited when you're playing. Now you're not playing and, and you lose a child and your wife, you know, at the time, my, my wife at the time was going through her, her treatments, uh, you know, just things spiral, you know, in a hurry. And, uh, you know, the good news is it wasn't like I medicated myself. I just used other, did, did other things. It was part of other things that I really don't want to get into other than, you know, you, you need to get on top of those in order for, to, to find out that your life has to be uh, worth something, because if not, it's going to get to a point where you know, you're not going to be here anymore either. And, and we don't want that. We want to make sure that, uh, you know, we do have the, the right uh, tools in place and, and, uh, but yeah, that's not fair. I mean, that's not the way the world was meant to be. You're not supposed to put your child in the ground before yourself. And, and, um, but the good thing about, uh, you know, Andrew, he's not suffering anymore. And the other wonderful thing is we honored him and started a foundation that helped families and children in, in Andrew's name. And so, uh, good can come out of a lot of, uh, a lot of other things too. And that's, that's hopefully what the, the, the trend that we like to start doing. So. That was part one of our interview with 1992 Super Bowl MVP Mark Rippon. Tune in next Monday for part two.